Welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to meet a Hampton businesswoman, author, publisher, uh, writing coach, business coach. Um, her name is Gladys Henderson Williams. Welcome. Thank you. Now, your business is called Manifest Destiny. Yes, that yes. doesn't quite explain what you do, so I'm going to let you explain it to us. Manifest Destiny is a company that helps people to write books from their dreams, from knowing where to start, how to get there. And we take you from that beginning all the way through publishing and book in hand. We also do an assessment of the business coaching, introduction to business ownership. Everyone needs to know what the basics are because transitioning into business ownership can be overwhelming. But we teach you the pros and cons of business types. So with that, there was a need that we saw in the city and we wanted to meet that need. So these are both tied together because it's what you did. It's your journey, really. You became a writer and you became a business owner. Yes, I had a desire back in early 1988 to write a book and leave it for my kids. I didn't want to trust my friends and family to give my story to my children. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to write the book myself. After one course of writing, I decided I'll just tell them. <laughs> I won't write it. It's too hard. It's too hard. It I was a lot too of people hard. give up. Exactly. And I wanted to take the fear after being able to write two books prior to retiring from the Department of Defense. I said, let's just make this a journey and help other people overcome the fears of writing. A lot of people have stories. But when they say, well, who will read it if I write it? Well, it's for certain they won't read it if you don't write it. So we encourage you to take all those steps. And then in business, that is such a phenomenal time to be in business right now. Entrepreneurs are taking over. So our entrepreneurs need step-by-step -step understandings of where do I get the forms? What forms do I even really need? Mm -hmm. What office do I take them to in the city of Hampton? So we take that off of them and help them walk through that process. Was it a big shift for you? I mean, you were working full-time for the Department of Defense, yes. and you began this writing career slash business uh, ownership while you still had that cushion of a full-time job. Yes, what happened is, although I had taken that writing course back in 1988, it lied dormant. Oh, you were an accountant, right? I was an accountant. <laughs> I didn't have time to do anything but numbers. Mm -hmm. So in 2003, it came back like since a rush and they say write and I began to write so I published the first book in 2003 and then in 2007 I released the second book The Silent Cry of Preachers and Leaders Kids and after overcoming those two I decided let's just help other people let's just help people who have a desire to write and we want to make sure you get your story on the shelves of bookstores then we went into said okay Let's make this the business side of books. People can write. They can get it published. But what is the business side of it? So that's when we launched the business coaching, how you market your book. The coaching piece came along just as a natural for us to proceed under Manifest Destiny. So you also work with, you, your books are not necessarily children's books, but you have some authors that you work with. Children's books have that extra complication in that they gotta have to come with illustrations. <laughs> Believe it or not, children's books are some of the easiest books to write because it's only so many words and sentences on each page. Mm -hmm. The pages are taken up with pictures, but we work with illustrators that can get those pictures just fine-tuned to what the story is. Because if you open a plot line, you gotta close it for kids. You have to have the happily ever after for mm -hmm. kids in mm -hmm. order for them to want to read another book. Children's books are wonderful to do. I love doing those. But you don't write them yourself, or you do? No, I come along, I help people, I coach them in the business process of writing books. People don't think of writing as a business initially, do they? No, they don't, because they're focused on, let me get my story out. Right. Let me just tell my life history. Or let me write a nonfiction or a fiction book, because I have a desire to tell this story. So they do that, and the children's books come along just as a bonus. <laughs> They're fun to do, yes. 
can I ask you, and I know this is your business and, and it, it's your income, but to maybe talk to writers out there for a minute and um, and give a few basic tips for free. And I know I know they can work with you and get more, but just how how do they get past, you know, the biggest hurdle I think is really doing it. You, we might all have 10 book ideas in our head, but getting them out is tough. If you can write brainstorm lists, you can write. So start with a brainstorming list, and those words will eventually tie themselves together. If you can come up with 20 words for just a beautiful day, looking outside your door and come up with a brainstorming list, you get 20 words, you can write a book. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're so inspirational. Um, how, how do they know if their idea, I mean, I think sometimes y you approach it from not bestseller um, promotion, but your story, your dreams, how do you get those out? That's a very personal thing for people to it, do. It really is, but what we do is we make the atmosphere so comfortable for you. When you come into our office, we'll set the atmosphere for you, for you to be able to produce what's in your heart and what you desire to do. We have our office on 2019 Cunningham Drive, Suite 416. We have private spaces that you can even come Set the atmosphere for what you want to write about and go for it. I have heard, you know, one of the big tips is to write every day. Whether you get very far or not, make a time, make a space, sit down and do it. It's critical that you have a space in your home, your office. If you like to write by the water, take a chair, but you want to designate a place where the flow of information comes forth real easy without any distractions. So if you write one paragraph a day, one sentence a day, or 10 pages a day, it is good to always keep paper by your bedside. I keep paper all through my house, little post-it notes, because you'll get a thought. Write it down, and later on you can build from it. Now, your books, and I just have glanced at them, are not necessarily um, long, and I'm going to hold this up for people to see, not really long narrative. Um, it's not a nonfiction storyline exactly, or at least some of them. You, th you think, describe your, your concept. My concept is Lunchtime Reads. I have a daughter who will be intimidated by a thick book. So I had to meet the needs of that genre and also that age bracket. So it came up, we came up with a lunchtime read. People love a sense of accomplishment. And if you can take a book of this size, I love appreciation, and you get that book read and you're not a big reader, you have success. You feel good about yourself. And you tell people, I read a book. That is, <laughs> you know, I've never thought of it that way. That's a wonderful way to think about it. All right, I have one last question for you, and that is this concept of, and I'm going to hold this one up too, uh, the preacher's kid. But you broaden it out to be a leader's kid, someone who is, you know, on the forefront of their community, who is held up um, as a model, to whom people come for guidance. How did that affect you, and how do you think that relates to other people? I wrote this book from a perspective of being a preacher's kid, but first I was a leader's kid before my dad became a pastor. Ah. So I could write it from both aspects of being a preacher's kid, a leader's kid. But we have so many community officials, we have people in our in everyday life that we meet, and they're so busy and so focused on accomplishing their goals because we're a goal oriented people. So they forget to balance that with kids, with family, with whatever, they, even fun. They just forget to balance that. So this book is specifically geared to don't be successful and have forgotten your family and the support staff that came along with the process. I have heard, I heard an interview on NPR the other day about uh, a preacher's kid. It was a substance abuse story, but but the idea is that she was so busy saving the community and and helping others that it, you know it didn't always um, work at her. She raised a wonderful kid, and everything's great now. But but it is this issue of those leaders, even if it's not their own personal success. A lot of times, it's they're working for the community good. They're working to to help other people, but it. 
And that you is can, so true. You can neglect things inside. You, you, you can, but what happens is because you give so much of yourself to outside of the door mm -hmm. from your home, when you get home, you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get home, you give a quick answer to your family. Whereas you took the time to be in detail outside of the home, but you get home and your energy is depleted. So the book talks about don't give everything out there and not have something left because your kids don't see you as the leader. Your kids see you as mom and dad, mm -hmm. and that's who they want when you come home. So may, that's one of the things that we teach very, very, very forcefully about the balancing. We want you to have a successful life in all areas, and that wholesome environment can help to bring that for leaders' kids to be successful also, and they'll want to be leaders. Because some kids have grown up in homes where they're they preacher's bad. kids. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they run away from is that identity. We've been told so many times that preacher's kids are the worst kids. Well, I'm not the worst kid. I think I turned out pretty good. So as a product of the preacher's kid and leader's kid's home, we want to make sure other people are healthy and that they're wholesome. Well, and that wholeness and balance, I think, also gets to the fact that we all do have stories. We all have a creative side and we may have had a job for a number of years that paid the bills and was fulfilling in a lot of ways, but as I see the sort of baby boomer generation retiring, they have a lot of creativity left to share that they didn't always get to do in their professions. And we welcome that because life doesn't stop at the end at that retirement ceremony when mm -hmm. you get that watch after 30 years, 35 years, oh, I did. Especially here when people retire after 20 years, you know, yes. with the military and all that. It's but you can refire. Refire, I like that. Refire, refire, because what we do at Manifest Destiny, we give you the knowledge. And we have this slogan, this tagline that's called business smarts equals business success. So we give you the tools so you can be successful in whatever refiring business or entity you want to go and do. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that Gladys shares not just the smarts, but the enthusiasm and the encouragement that a lot of people need to get over that hurdle. Thanks for watching.